Yeah, you can go, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, welcome to this talk about Spring Boots. Ja, mein Jahr ist Nicola Frankel. Ja, Ott von C. Ja, Rad Bit Tut. Ja, Uchu Paruski. Nie Tjagelo Gavarit Paruski. So, if you have any questions, please ask them in English. And that's all for now. Um, uh, I'm a developer. You are all developers, right? So I should say I'm a developer. Um, I, I've always done uh, consulting work. I also do some teaching and training. I'm a blogger. Um, I work for a company called Hybris, which was uh, recently bought by SAP. Uh, Hybris uh, is an e-commerce platform based on Spring and Java. So that's quite a good product. Um, so back to the subject at end. Um, we are here to talk about Spring Boot for DevOps. Uh, let's define DevOps because uh, DevOps is um, a term that is used and abused by everyone. So what is DevOps in this context? Um, is it about devs and ops collaboration? I I'm afraid that Spring Boot cannot help you uh, to better work with people. Um, is it about treating your infrastructure as code? You know that uh, with DevOps, we try to automate uh, uh, servers, instances, creation, and stuff like that. Yeah. Unfortunately, you've got dedicated tools like Chef, Puppet, and Sybil, and so on. So Spring Boot can not help you with that either. Um, is it to automate everything? Well, no. In this context, DevOps means the following three subjects. So this will be the scope of this talk. It will be about Application metadata, so what can your application tell you? It will be about health checks, so how can you make sure that the application responds? And it's about metrics. So what is, because even if your application is up, uh, meaning your data source is up, you still can have problems because you have too many loads on your application, too many requests. So let me tell you a little story. And as you can see, it's not a nice story. Um, so you're a developer, and you just finished your application, and you are very happy about it. Then uh, you call the ops guy, and you tell him, you know, my application is ready. Please put it into production. The guy tells you, OK, but do you have an operation manual? And you are an experienced developer. So you tell him, yes, I have such a manual. And I described exactly uh, when such exception happen in the log. This is what you should do. Hmm, that's good, first step. Um, the guy says, OK, how, but how can I configure the application in different environments? Um, and probably you tell him, it's in the operation manual. I have externalized a property file. Everything is in an externalized file, so you can change the configuration, and everything is written in the ops manual documentation. Wow, the guy is very surprised. And comes the final question. So how can I monitor the application? Oh, fuck. That's what I forgot. Um, in fact, you didn't forget it, because it was not in the specification, right? People don't care about monitoring. The business users don't care about monitoring. So at this point, you have three options. The first option is to go back to the project manager and ask him for more budgets. You know? Oh, I just forgot to do that. But uh, yeah, give me three more weeks, and you will get it. OK. Um, if the project manager is in a nice mood and has, you have good relationship with him, yeah, probably it will get you the budget. But then you won't get a so good annual review because, yeah, you delayed the project by three weeks, if not more. Not nice option. The second option um, is to come to the project manager and tell him to still push the application in production because the ops guy basically is just, you know, a little pawn. And, yeah, if he's, he's told, you should put the application in production by a project manager or, or by a department manager. 
he will do it anyway. What happens in this case, if, if there is any problem in production, you will be the one to be called at 3 a.m. in the morning, because he will say, that's not my problem, you know you made me do it. Still not a good solution. The third solution is, hey, it's good news, it's Friday. And yeah, you know, every day has 24 hours. So you can hack something by Monday. Would you like to do that? No. Did it ever happen to anyone to have such a case? Yeah, it happened to me. And every time I have to take into account that what in uh, the business specification is only part of my work. So when you estimate something, you have to take that into account. Um, what I like, however, is not to do the same stupid thing every time, because it has a really no value to do that. Come Spring Boot, and Spring Boot has everything out of the box. Spring Boot provides you with metadata, with monitoring, and since Spring Boot is based on the Spring Stack, you can also check for all the beans in your uh, bean factory, all the property value, all the controller mappings, and everything. So, I have talked enough. Who knows about this little drawing? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, great, uh, you've got the first token. It was an easy question, but you were the only one to know about it. Okay, this is a Spring Pet Clinic, and someone on the internet was kind enough to give me a version of the Spring Pet Clinic but done with Spring Boot. Anyone knows about Spring Boot? Yeah, everyone. That's great. Everyone loves Spring Boot. Everyone should use Spring Boot. So, uh, basically, what I did that is just I took the project and I tweaked it a little. Um, so, right now, what I will do is I will just launch, which is already done, and check the Spring Pet Clinic. So this is a Spring Pet Clinic, and you can uh, find owners, and of course I didn't log in, so I have to log in. Oh, no, that's the demo syndrome. I already forgot the password. Thanks. You can find owners, you can uh, check for veterinarians, error inbox, whatever. So it's a little application designed to showcase Spring Boots uh, features, oh, Spring features, sorry. So, this talk is about DevOps. This talk is about metrics. So if you have something, and one only thing to remember is the following. I will add a single dependency, a single one, okay? Which is called the Spring Boot Starter Actuator. So by adding this dependency and only this dependency, if I run my application again, and why did I do clean? Because it will take more time. Anyway, um, this is a problem with this demo. Is I have to start every time the server. So uh, I have to uh, talk meanwhile, and I don't know, I don't know any jokes. Um, but the good thing is it's nearly finished. And here I have everything I need. So I have uh, one additional endpoint, which for now is empty. We will see how we can have data in it. We have the metrics endpoint. Of course, the format is not so nice, but still, I've got metrics out of the box. I've got those checks right out of the box. So remember, the only thing <coughs> that you have to know is adding the Spring Boot Starter Actuator. So, uh, I would like to have something uh, which is nicely formatted, and since I have a very, very bad memory, I will check my GitHub repository, and I will just copy-paste the stupid stuff, which is not this one, which is in Enspet Clinic. Sure, and here it will be the pretty print. And just with this simple property, I will have something more readable. If I can copy it pro properly. 
Yes. So now it should have started, and if I reload, no, not yet. Yes, OK. Much better, much more readable. And of course, I told you, you can have the beans. So here, you know, when you develop Spring application, which is behind a Hello World application, you've got plenty, hundreds, thousands of beans, and what's in my bean factory? And if you use auto wiring, it gets even more complicated. So here, you've got the exact uh, state of your bean factory nicely presented. So what's in my bean factory at this time? You can also check the actual configuration of everything. So if you've got different profiles, uh, OK, what is exactly in this? So that's quite good, right? So let's dig further into the metadata stuff. Um, <clears throat> most of the time, when you use an application as a developer, especially a develop, uh, an application you, you should develop further, you uh, ask yourself, uh, but which, uh, which version is it? Which application ID is it? Which group ID is it? OK? And each time, uh, I get to do that with my little hands because there is nothing out of the box. So what I did usually before is that I created a property file. Uh, I filtered it through Maven, and then I read it in my application and put it somewhere, and it works. The bad stuff is I, I have to do it every time. It, it's useless. I, 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 you know, I, I don't want to work for nothing. I, I want uh, something which is easy for me. So I want my application ID, my group ID. I want the version. I want everything out of the box. And Spring Boot helps me in that. How to do that? Here, everything that starts with info will, get, will take place into the info endpoint. So I will say application foo equals bar. And if I restart the application, and now I will be smarter, I will remove clean. I should see that in the info endpoint. So that's good that it's on GitHub. If you ever do something which is uh, smart for everyone, don't forget it to put it on GitHub so uh, that uh, speakers can reuse it. No, come on, don't do that, please. OK, I will do that, but just because it's you. OK, and so here, with just one line of configuration, I've got static metadata. What good is static? Uh, static is good, because it's at least something. What I can do right now is I want more, so I want I told you my application ID. And if you have done the filtering stuff before, who did already did the filtering stuff to get the version and the, yeah. Oh, only two people. Three. Four. Hey, come on, what are you doing the other one? You are not interested in, the, in such stuff. So if you did it, you probably did it something like this. Uh, artifact ID, sorry. Otherwise, it won't work so well. And I will do it like this here. Right? You did this? The four people? Great. For the other one, you should do it right now. And you will also need the group ID, I told you. And this is nice, but now I have to configure my POM to do filtering on this application.properties. And I told you, so what I do is I use Spring Boot for that. 
And by just choosing the Aurobus character, and because I inherited from the Spring Boot starter parent, the filtering is already configured in the parent POM. So now, if I run it again, I should have not only my static information, but information from the POM. Who uses Maven already? And Gradle? Oh, come on. <laughs> I love bitching about Gradle because it's so easy. Um, so now, if I reload stuff, I've got my group ID, my artifact ID. How cool is that? Three lines. Three lines. So you still have time for your weekend to enjoy your family or your girlfriend or, I don't know, or to do more, more development. Um, what I would like to have now uh, is to also have my version ID, so I can use the same stuff as I did for Maven Palm, but I, I can also uh, use GitHub information. <coughs> How do you do that? Then you have um, something which is called the Git Commit ID plugin. And this Git ID plugin will create a dedicated file. And again, it's too verbose, so I prefer to copy paste it. Then I'm nearly sure I won't do any big mistake. OK. So let's see how it goes. So the good thing is it's, everything is done for you. But you have to configure it. Uh. Yes. By default, it won't generate the file. So the goal of this plugin is to gener generate a git properties that will read your .git slash config and put everything it has in it. OK? By default, this plugin doesn't generate the file, which, in my opinion, is a little stupid. So you have to tell it to generate the file. There is one property to generate the file. The other stuff, that the, 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 the bad default I don't like, is that by default, this file will be generated in src slash main slash resource. So it will be in your source code. So probably it will be uploaded to your SCM, which, in my opinion, completely defeats the purpose. So you have to tell it to put it in your target folder. And by just doing that, I didn't configure Nothing more. Spring Boot is actually um, developed to read this file if it exists. So let's see how it goes. Yes. So I have information, such as the branch, the commit ID, and the commit time. Now there is a little thing that I don't like in this. And the thing that I don't like, actually, is that the plugin is very good, and it gives you, no, not now. Please, don't ask me to register now. Uh, can I increase the size of the staff? No. So you have to have uh, glasses. Um, but you can see there are plenty of lines, right? Uh, and you have plenty more information, such as uh, the commit uh, user ID and stuff like that. And Spring Boot only takes free information, which I don't like. So what you can do, uh, but uh, I won't have uh, enough time to do that right now, uh, is you can override the info endpoint to read the entirety of the file. And that is not easy, but it's very possible to do. So if you use Spring Boot, you know that it's possible to override, right? Because Spring Boot will read your bin factory. And what it does is that it sees if there is an info endpoint in the bin factory. So an info endpoint that you provided yourself. If it doesn't find it, it will provide one for you. But if you provide it yourself, of course, you can put it everything that you want. So that's quite good for. Five lines of code, right? Um, the other point is health checks. 
So what are health checks? Health checks are a way to monitor your application. Basically, uh, in every application, you have dependencies. Your application is not in the sky and completely isolated. Uh, most of the time, you have a data source. Generally speaking, every application requires a data source. Right now, a modern application also probably requires web services. And generally speaking, if your database or your web services are not available, your application is down and cannot provide the feature. It's easy at that. So what you want to do is, if an application, uh, if a, a dependency is down, if a database is down, you don't want your user or your customer to call you and tell you that your application is down. You want to know it before them because you might want to restart the database or you might want to put a static page or anything. And then Spring Boot makes it very easy for you. As uh, you have just seen before, is that in the else check endpoints, we already have a dependency, right? And it tells us that it's up. It's good because it's a hypersonic uh, database. So if it's down, there is really must be a problem with application. Uh, uh, another uh, uh, common resource is, is, yeah, the disk. So because you, you might want to use a disk. So if every, uh, every resource, every dependency is up, then your page is up. So how is it implemented? Oh, no, 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 not, not the picture at the moment, right? <laughs> Well, that's awkward. I will exit the show. Yes. That's not very funny. <laughs> yeah. That's not very funny. Uh, I guess that's the demo syndrome. Now is a good time. Yeah. Now is good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, how is it implemented? Um, every Every dependency, every resource dependency, will be wrapped inside a health object. And this health object will make its magic and return a status. And you have four status. Most of the time, the most important ones are up and down. Either your resource is up and your application is up, or your resource is down and your application is down. But you might also have statuses that are not so clear-cut, like unknown or out of services. For each health object, you not only have a status, but you have a, an optional detail, so you can provide more details. Even if the application is up, you can provide more details. That is important. Because the previous version, you, can, you could also only provide details when the application was down, which was not so nice. Um, and then you've got the else endpoint. And the else endpoint will aggregate all checks. Okay? And as soon as one is down, the application will be marked as down. So this can be reflected not only in the JSON, but also in the HTTP status code. Because I don't know, and Spring Boot neither, know about uh, the maturity of your ops team. Perhaps they don't, know, they don't know how to parse JSON. So probably they have the tools to uh, recognize the HTTP status code. So how do you do that to return those else objects? You have a bin that implements health indicator, and it's done. Just a word for those who used a previous version of Spring Boot is that previously it relied on the drop wizard health check, which is not the case anymore, which means you don't need those dependency right now. Demo time. So I will create a new configuration class, and I will call it health info. And I will make it a little larger. And now I don't forget to put configuration on it. And here I don't forget to put bin on it. 
So public health indicator, um, let's call it foo indicator. Yeah, I'm very unimaginative. And I will return a new health indicator. And it has only a single uh, method. And I will return a health. Health implements the builder pattern. So I can say it's up uh, with details. Foo is a key, bar is a value. And I will have to build it afterwards. OK? So quite easy. Don't forget the semicolon. And if I restart it now, and I navigate to the health endpoint, what will happen? You have a new health check. Yeah, I will have a new health check. And so probably this is what, what, what happens. Yes, right. Quite easy. So this is how you implement health checks. And those, some of those, uh, Spring Boot can infer them for you. Uh, for example, I will add a new dependency. And I will add a new uh, dependency in my POM. Which is a dependency on Solar instance. But since I don't configure anything, Spring Boot default will expect a running solar instance outside of the application. And I have none. So in this case, the dependency will be missing. There will be a problem. And the status will probably be different. So if I use my developer tools and I check, And I reload. Now my status is down, right? Because solar is down. And it gives you the exception. And here it's red for those that were sitting in the back. And it's 503 for those who are sitting in the front. So out of the box, Spring can Spring Boot can infer some dependencies for you and can already provide them wrapped in the right health indicator. How cool is that? And I, I, I didn't develop nothing. Only if you have custom stuff like web services, because Spring Boot cannot infer what you really want to do with your web services. If you want <coughs> to have further details, to have more confidence. Uh, for example, let's take the example of a database connection. You want to make sure that your database responds. The first thing you can do is you can try to take a connection out of the uh, GNDI pool. The second stuff is you can do is uh, you can uh, select star from dual if you're on Oracle. And if you want still to go further, you might want to really have a real select in your database. So this is the kind of else checks that you might want to implement. And the level of the health check, the details of the health check, the more trust you have in the health check really depends on you, on your particular use case. Oh, Boji Moy. May I say, Chort was me? It's acceptable, right? Yes, because I know something which is not acceptable. <laughs> they are girls. OK, the last point will be metrics. Who knows about the drop with on metrics? Three, four? OK, five? Great. So those you don't, you should really look at them. It's really a nice model. Um, drop with on metrics provide you two very important stuff, uh, a metrics model. So what is a metric? You know about Spring Batch, before we did Spring Batch, we did many things, but what Spring Batch brought is what is a batch? What is a step? What is a chunk? What is a retry? 
So st st really simple, stupid stuff, but nobody did it before them. And drop wizard is the same stuff. It tells you what metrics are, which kind of metrics. And drop wizard also bring you uh, exporter to backends. Uh, for example, simple metrics, uh, you have a gauge. A gauge is a simple value. Okay, it's a definition. A gauge is a simple value. A counter is an incremental gauge, meaning you can infer the next value from the previous one. For example, the response time, is it a gauge or a counter? The response time of a page. It's a gauge because it cannot be inferred. Okay? Probably there might be a correlation, but the exact value cannot be inferred anyway. And the number of a particular, particular page that has been viewed can be inferred. You increment it by one each time you receive a new request. So very simple stuff. As for the reporters, uh, Drop Wizard brings you GMX, but we don't care about it. HTTP, but we don't care about it because those are already provided by Spring Boot. And if I have time, I will show you how to do it with Graphite. Who knows about Graphite? Hey guys, uh, today you are not very active. <laughs> is it, is it, is it uh, too much after lunch? Ivan, you should really put... Uh, it's after... I, I really need to have my talk scheduled in the morning and not after the party, please. Sorry? Okay, so the first day will be nice. Okay, anyway, who knows about the G console? Ah, that's much better. Whoever used the G console? That's a little less. Okay. Anyway, I'm here for you, so I will show you the G console. I love this. Um, so, how does it work, the G console? Basically, G console is a view into your uh, GMX managed bin. GMX stands for Java uh, Management Extension. And basically, whatever instance of your uh, beans, and when I'm talking about beans, I'm talking about normal, simple Java beans, not spring beans, you have in your application, you can wrap them in an M bean, and then it will provide management option like getters, setters, or anything. And you have to connect to a running GVM instance. So in this case, because I have some experience in that, I know that this is my application. This is the Plexus, because uh, it's uh, what uh, was uh, used by Maven before. And here, of course, I'm not connecting through SSL. And here, I have some beans that are already managed. So as you can see, the endpoints, the endpoints that Spring Boot provides are already managed by mBeans. So you can configure them, or at least check some values, like endpoint class, whether it's sensitive, through GMX. Now, if I run a simple page, sorry, it can be even the else check page. It can be the any page. Oh, I've lost the menu because, yes. What did I forget? Yeah, I didn't export anything right now. So it's normal. Now, what I want is to have uh, the metrics. I want those metrics exported into GMX, OK? Because right now, this is not really exploitable, right? My ops guy will have to uh, pass this kind of stuff, and probably they don't want to do that. The, many of them have much more experience with um, GMX stuff. So I will create a new config class, and I will call it metrics info. And 
Of course, it's better if you scroll like that. And I will create a new bean. Publix, GMX, and now I have to find it again because it's changed between the, the, the version. So I will have better just copy paste it. OK. I will just tell you why I do that just afterwards. OK. And I forgot something. Yes, here. OK, this compiles. So I will create a new bean. And don't ask me why. It's probably an implementation detail. I don't know the specifics. I have also to add this export metric writer annotation. I don't know why, because it could be inferred from the written type. Anyway, it's like that. Uh, the metric writer, uh, I have to pass it an mbin exporter that will be passed to my gmx metric writer. So now, why do I put this named annotation? Any answer for that? Why is it necessary? It yes. And why should, should it be unique? Because it has two in the factory right now. I don't know why. That's a good answer. Here is your token. Sorry about that. OK? I don't know why, but in this application, I have two NBIN exporters. So I have to tell it I want this one. OK? Now, if I restart the application, the application, not the gconsole, and probably the gconsole will bitch because I have a new GVM. Yes. And it should be this one. So now, without doing anything, I have, as you can see, a new leaf. And here you can see that the metric writer is also wrapped by mbean. So you can do this thing on the GMX writer itself. OK, but that's not enough. That's not what I promised you. So let's navigate through the application, the metrics itself, and then the application. And I will go there and go there and go there, and we go there. Yeah, it's not very nice. Um, oh, something appeared. And those are the actual figures that I saw already in my HTTP endpoint. You see those gauge and counter? I have them in here the same way. And I told you that, for example, a counter should be incremented by one. So if I have here, it's, it tells me that I have uh, had two requests on this page that return a 200 return code. Now, if I go to it one more time and I refresh, it should be free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry for those who were sleeping in the back. But sometimes I click, I, I click too fast, and it's not refreshed. So now it works. I'm very happy about that. So this is how you get your metric into gconsole. And your DevOps, your ops, sorry, will love you for that. Because this is what they want. OK? How much time do I have? OK. But the bad thing about it is that, for example, the gauge themselves, the response time, OK, here is 3 seconds. If I refresh it, it's still 3 seconds. If I refresh it multiple times, I hope it will be no, oh, still 3 seconds. <laughs> OK, believe me, <laughs> it, it, the thing is, um, the, the response time is completely independent. And if you only have the last value, that's not, not nice. 
What I want to have is something in the nice dashboard to see uh, the curve and how it goes. So what can you do about it? Well, um, there is this nice stuff, yes, it works this time, called graphite. And uh, who knows about graphite? That's okay. This is uh, more like up stuff, so it's okay if you don't know it. Um, and basically, you can have any kind of numeric data and display it on a nice dashboard. So this is very, very important when you want to really uh, check what happens. So let's do that. Let's put our uh, stuff on graphite. So I will remove the G console, please. OK, I won't remove the G console. Yes, I did remove the G console. Um, what I have also, and thanks for those people who contribute on GitHub, I have a Vagrant which, uh, with uh, an embedded uh, uh, graphite server. So I will up my Vagrant, and it will do its stuff all alone. That's good. Meanwhile, when I'm doing that, in this case, I will use the exporter from drop wizard. So I will add a dependency in my pom, and I will have add metrics graphite. Note that in this case, I don't need to set the version. Why? Because it's in the, yeah, it's in the, uh, yeah, exactly. That means that the people from Spring Boot are smart enough to know that this is a very important library, and they provide you with the version which is compatible with their version of Spring Boot out of the box. So that's quite cool. And what I will do again is to go to my uh, metrics info, and I will create a bean, and I will uh, let's say I will call uh, graphite exporter. So it must be something like graphite exporter here. No, graphite. I don't remember. Again. A reporter. Yeah. Who said that? Great. You helped me a lot. You pulled me out of an embarrassing situation. This deserves a token. I still have one token left. <laughs> um, so it will be a graphite reporter. Uh, no, I switched to Cyrillic. That's true. Um, OK, so here I want to return a new graphite reporter. Uh, this is made possible by a builder pattern. So here, it expects a so-called metrics registry. And metrics registry uh, is something that the metric registry is something that is provided by Spring Boot as soon as you've got any uh, drop wizard library in your class path. So since I added metrics graphite, it all, uh, one of uh, metrics graphite dependency is metrics core, which contains the metric registry class. So Spring Boot detects that in the class path there is a metric registry and provides it as a bean, so you can inject it easily. Is it already past the, the time? Or do I have still uh, 15 minutes? 15 minutes, right? Yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, to build the stuff, uh, I will prefix it with, let's say, Joker. <coughs> and I will build, and it needs some, uh, a graphite server. So I already created, I already launched the graphite server. Though, uh, uh, the only thing that I need is um, to, uh, so it's not graphite reporter, yo, import class. And now I should do something like that. Graphite sender. So here I create a new graphite and I will say that it runs on localhost 
And I think, if I remember well, it's 2223, the port. And let me check. Uh, 2003. Okay. Here I put the graphite server. And now something which is very important. If you do that, it won't work. It won't work. What you have to do when you've got a handle on the graphite reporter, you have to tell it to start. That is very, very easy to forget. <laughs> Especially when you are doing a demo. Okay? So this works now. Uh, at least it should. Okay? So in this case, I don't really need a bean, but I, I cannot do anything else. What I really need is just to get a hold to create a, an instance of my reporter and to start it. But it's how things are done in Spring, so it's like that. Now, if I restart my application, and I should go to local host 8080, which is my graphite dashboard, is there something called Joker here? No. So. <coughs> I should wait a little bit, and I should play with my metrics and with every stuff in here. And now, if I restart, please. Yes, it's always a nice stuff when the demo works well. Um, and here, you can see that I have everything that I've showed you previously uh, in, in my G console. But so what the interest, because I have the same uh, tree. Now what you can do is, uh, you, no, 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 I didn't want to do that. I can uh, check that I want the last, let's say, two minutes. OK. And I want uh, the count of metrics and the count of, uh, I will say, the response time, because the response time is the most interesting stuff. Did I put it? Yes. Oh, I already have some metrics. How good is that? So, so far, so good. I will remove it. And now uh, I should have something like that. I should do this, this, metrics. And I will. Yeah, this is the most boring part. You have to reload. And normally, uh, if I check again, yes. Now you can see that you've got a nice dashboard. This is what I wanted to, to, to show you. Okay, that's very good. Now you've got your metrics in Graphite, and you have a friend. You, you are now a, a better friend to your DevOps. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't like having to run a graphite server on my own machine while I'm developing. So I will shut it down. And here, Spring Boot will make it very clear that he's not happy about not having graphite. Yeah, sure. Of course, I configure it to use graphite, and I'm, I, I, I'm shutting down graphite. Um, so. Basically, you have, um, you have two options at this time, for development time. Either you define two different reporters, one on G-Console and one on Graphite. You add a profile development to the GMX1, and you add a missing on con uh, conditional on missing bin on the Graphite one, which means by default in production, the development profile won't get activated, so it will run the graphite reporter, and in development, it will send the stuff to gconsole. Or, in this case, I wouldn't use this option, I would use a second option. You only put the GMX reporter in every case. 
and you rely on, on, the, on an infrastructure component called GMX Trains to take the metrics from the G console and to put it into Graphite. And this is the true value of the ops there. Then the developer, developers are happy and the ops guys are happy. About the metrics, one last thing I want to emphasize is that metrics are not only technical. The good thing is that you will get a lot more traction with your business user if you make them understand what they gain by putting their own metrics. Uh, for example, you might want to implement your own version of Google Analytics to check that, hey, in an e-commerce scenario, I don't know you, if you got 100 users going to the checkout page, perhaps only 20% did, did finally purchase. You can do a bit testing and got the metrics and why and stuff like that. So if you want to implement this, it's, quite, it's very fast, but it's m even much easier if you embark your business user in this kind of stuff. So um, basically, I'm done. You can find uh, the stuff on the GitHub, so the NNS Pet Clinic. I have created a branch uh, called a DevOps, so every single step that I showed you is in the GitHub. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, I will be very happy. You can be my friend on LinkedIn. You can follow my blog. And um, I, I still have this nice book that I've written. Uh, it's still, uh, still very up to date, and of course, you're welcome uh, to get it. And I've got a foreword by uh, Josh Long, which is cool. Um, do you have any questions at this point? I will upload the slides, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, when you configure your monitor, and, uh, did you solve a problem when you, that you can uh, hmm. Yeah, my yeah. Russian is probably worse okay, than your English, okay. so... Uh, but but in French, if you can tell it in French, it's no, okay. No, no. <laughs> that can't you... Uh, but you can't map uh, your monitoring URLs to the URLs with slashes. Did you solve it? That's a very good question, actually. And still, since we have some time, I can show you how to easily do that. Because it's like, you know, Spring Boot really helps you. What I can do is to say, OK, guys, I want everything to be served from a context space called manage, for example. And I restart. Oh, I will remove the graphite stuff because I don't want it to complain. It's not so nice. Even better, you can tell for every endpoint if it contains sensitive information or not. So you can get it protected by Spring Security out of the box, just declaratively, and that is so cool. Now, if I get back to my application, uh, if I do metrics, it tells you nothing. Now, if I go to manage metrics, That's up. Um. one line of configuration. Yes, uh, yep, I know. Uh, sorry, when you uh, stop a graphic server, uh, either your application is down. Sorry, when I what? Uh, when you stop your graphic server. When I stop the server? Graphite, ser yeah. graphite server. Yeah. Uh, is your application is no. down? No, no, my Why? application is not down. Because, yeah, it still works. I, I can still serve HTTP requests. It's just by when I try to send stuff in an asynchronous way to, to graphite, it tells me it cannot. Because, yeah, the, the, the server is not there, but the application still works perfectly. Hmm. But it's not good for your ops guy, because they will see a huge shitload of uh, exceptions, which you don't want. So that's why I propose to you, yeah, and not, don't use graphite directly. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you for a great talk. Thanks. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to talk about annotation uh, that you use it for managed bins. Managed bin to register it. Uh, it uh, happens because 
uh, when you start Spring using Java config, uh, the class name is not in the bin definition. This is why we need annotation. Yeah. Uh, and my question is, uh, uh, can I use a health indicator to provide some reporting service for application? Like it's scheduled, uh, and uh, when something down, it reports for me. Does Spring Boot have something auto configured for this? Uh, can you repeat it? I'm not sure. You won't. Uh, I won't use a health indicator as my reporting service. Like when something goes down, Spring Boot report to me. That you want to send something. Um, Should I use uh, schedule automation and uh, just? What you probably want to do is um, to use uh, the uh, health endpoint, okay? And then probably your ops tool have this kind of stuff. Uh, that uh, they, they, they regularly ping this page, and when if the, the, the HTTP status code is five something, uh, then they send you a, a mail, uh, an SMS. Probably you ops tool, uh, tooling already have this kind of stuff. Uh, but it's better when your application can report it itself. I don't think so. You know, there is call, this thing called uh, uh, separation of concern, so that your application is able to tell its status, it's in the scope. You know, how it's called, you know, uh, an, an application will evolve until the point where you have to, uh, it has to send mails. I don't remember there is a principle like that. No, your application doesn't need to send mails because then if it needs to send mails, then it will require another dependency. And what if the mail server is down? No, probably in this case, you want your, uh, your operation team to take care of that. You already provided everything they need to have this kind of stuff. So in this case, I, I wouldn't advise you to do it. You can. Thank you. Uh, I have an application uh, which connects to, to, uh, to multiple data sources. One, uh, you have an application that? Uh, that uses uh, multiple data sources? Da. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> One is Oracle and the other is uh, MS uh, SQL. And it, you know, your story starts like mine, you know, like Freddy Krueger. It starts <laughs> very badly. And uh, for default, uh, with default logic, uh, when one of database is down, the status, the application status is also down. Then, because of this application in my responsibility, I have the night calls. And what I want, that uh, that call will be received by database administrator which database is down. Okay. Do I have some ways to uh, re implement this? Yes, you have ways. Uh, basically, for the same reason as a separation of concern, you can create an ab another application under the uh, ops team responsibility that will scrape the page, pause the JSON, and say, oh, in this case, it's this application that is down, I will do this, and in those uh, the other case, I will do that. Again, that really depends on your ops tooling. I don't think, I, I don't know really about ops tooling, but most have a very low level of maturity. They can only uh, check the HTTP code. Other have more mature, they can scrap JSON. But then you have to have a team who is willing to post JSON and to do stuff with JSON. But that's what I would advise you to do. But uh, my first advice would be mm, bad design. But you have constraint, probably. It's legacy. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I know this kind of shit. Yeah, don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still room for one question? Well, thanks for your talk. Uh, what should we do if we want to monitor the, this monitoring tool itself? Should we use uh, on another server uh, some other Spring Boot that monitors the first Spring Boot or some other tool? And again, that is Ops responsibility. And that really depends on your organization. Uh, I'm just trying to give uh, you the tools to better collaborate with the Ops team. But how they operate themselves, 
what your current relationship with them, uh, what the tools are, I, I have no idea. So without any specifics, I cannot just take you know, this advice out of the sky and tell them you should all do that. What you should all do is to use Spring Boot, because as you can see, it's very easy to, 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 to use, uh, to use uh, Spring Boot to, to monitor your application. So that is basically a simple advice, because in every context, it, ca it can be applied. Yeah. Can, can you pass the microphone? It will be the last question. Sorry, but you can come afterwards, talk to me. Uh, this is not a question, this answer for previous question. Uh, when you have installed a graphite server, actually you have a default metrics uh, from graphite it itself, uh, so you can, can control basic metrics uh, of graphite too. Uh, when, when you have graphite server by, def by Is default... Is it a question or do you want to answer? Answer. Yeah, le let's put it in Russian and I won't, uh, I won't uh, understand. No, no. And, no, and, no. And, and one question. Uh, okay. Do you have some stuff uh, for log files? Uh, some, some, but series for this? For log files? For log files. Uh, like for... And that's a good question, metrics. actually. Uh, no, I, it's not no. And what would be the use case? Because uh, I use my log files uh, generally to give me the exception and stuff like that. The metrics themselves, I think it's better to, Maybe to some be uh, like this. Maybe some log for J... For wrapper around uh, to send data to logstash or uh, uh, or some so not that i know of provided by spring boots okay okay thanks. thank you very much